Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Facing the Music with Terry Oldfield. My name is John Valdivia, producer at idesound.com. This series, curated from Candid Conversations, will introduce a return to the mystery and wonder of existence, as well as our necessity to confront ourselves. We shall also feature selected pieces from Terry's extensive musical anthology. In this episode, Terry continues his exploration of other realities. He deep dives into how our belief systems shape our realities and shares some anecdotes about Sai Baba. Welcome to Facing the Music. Apparently there's an area around the planet which is, it's a ring of um, random thinking and emotions. It's the living in automation area which is being created around the planet by the constant babble which is adding to that confusion. He says when you leave your body to get to the the outer rings, you have to cross this area. He says that all of us, almost without exception, leave our bodies at night. And this is how we rejuvenate, you know, and carry on, because we cannot just be in a body. You have to go back to the there to, to have that connection. But most people can only connect with the random automation of this, this ring. And he says that if you've transcended that and you know that there are outer rings where people are actually awake in their astral bodies and they know that they can travel and you know, interrelate, all that sort of thing. Because you don't have arms, you don't have legs, you don't have the senses anymore. You, all you've got is your mental stuff you can't touch you can't hear and so the training is so important to be able to let go of the limitation area because otherwise you know i'm not saying this is true i'm just my feeling is that it's that there is an element of truth and it's that when you die you've lived a life of total automation and ended up on the couch with your pot belly and watching simpsons and your beer in if that has been your life you will find yourself in that automation. Uh, you will create your reality based on your belief systems until you come back again, have another go, and learn a bit more. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, the people do have thousands of Simpson rounds. It takes a lot to get this awakening happening because it's so convincing. You know Sai Baba in India? Huge ashram, you know, thousands of followers. I got a, a letter, because it was before emails, from the ashram in his ashram in India saying that Sai Baba wanted to use my music for his birthday celebration. And this is a guy who has, you know, a million followers in India. And I said, yeah, fine, no problem. And he sent me a kilo of vibhuti. Vibhuti is the ash he produces from his, the palms of his hands. He's one of these miracle worker guys in India. I thought nothing of it. I'm not impressed with that sort of thing. So I put it I put it on the vegetable garden. When I tell people I did that, they say, my God, you had a kilo of the stuff. A, a pinch is worth, you know. Anyway, I was totally innocent. I didn't know what I had. Then I heard from Keith Critchlow, who's this architect guy, 
that he had been invited to hit the ashram in India out of the blue by Sai Baba to design the hospital that he was building there. And when Keith arrived there, he went with his wife because he was a bit, oh, well, God, you know, I'm going to see a guru in India. It's a bit weird. I'll take my wife with me. I'll be nice and safe. <laughs> Anyway, you know, they were welcomed at the ashram and then Sai Baba sent for him the next day. He went and sat next to him and, and Sai Baba said, you think I'm a bit of a fraud really, don't you, Keith? I mean, I'm not, I, I don't blame you. I mean, you know, you think all these stories of me producing things, he said. And he went like this and a ring was in the center of his hand. He said, this will fit you perfectly. And Keith said, ah, put it on. It was an absolute perfect fit. And then he said, well, I noticed you haven't got a watch. So he went like that. And there was a Rolex watch. I'm not kidding. This is, this is, he told me this story. Keith is totally, totally reliable. Um, he was converted because seeing is believing, you see. There's no way that this could happen. But it did happen. He had the luxury of having seen what you would probably call a miracle. And so his whole left brain opened up to the possibility that perhaps things are not the way they seem. <laughs> Sai then says, well, look, that's sorted that out, hasn't it? Why do you think I asked you here? Because I know that you can create the most beautiful hospital, you know, using your knowledge of sacred geometry. I need something here that works, he said. It's got to be the right vibrations, the right orientation. People are going to come here sick. I want them to get well, you know. So I asked you here. It's very simple stuff. It's not hugely enlightened it's just you know once you get the hang of this game you know Sai Baba with a million followers producing watches it's just normal I think you know what I'm trying to say here I'm saying that there's nothing special about it it's just we're all special we all leave our bodies at night and most of us get stuck in the inner ring of confused automation of emotions and thoughts that are just double. But as soon as you can move through this first barrier, you start to meet beings that are actually there, yeah, there, yeah. A lot of them are very, very skillful at negotiating back through the, the quagmire to the planet. Magicians, they do exist. The people that have transcended their belief systems and opened up to the fact that this is a click, you know, and, and you can change anything, you know, you can move. It's like the Force in the Star Wars movies, you know. But fluid reality, this is the key to it all, you see. And one of the byproducts of being open to this fluidity is that you have access to the present moment because the thinking just stops. As Krishnamurti says, thought has to find its right place. It finds its right place and it, it just moves into the background and looks after the, the whole thing in the most efficient way.
Thank you for listening to Facing the Music. We want to extend out gratitude for your company today. For enriching context and further insight into our series, do visit iTheSound.com slash Terry. We have provided all the pertinent information in the description. For those interested in delving deeper into Terry's compelling journey, his biography, Only Now, is readily available on all major online bookstores. It is an intimate and insightful account of a life dedicated to music and spiritual awakening. Lastly, please visit terryoldfield.com to stay up to date with Terry's latest endeavors. Once again, thank you for your time. This is John Valdivia from iTheSound.com. <laughs>